Today we're going to create a basic folder and file structure that can be used for future front-end development projects. Let's create our folder and set up our folder structure. The first step is to create the folder itself, which I've named basic-structure. Please notice that instead of using spaces, I separated the words using dashes. The reason why it's not recommended to use spaces and rather dashes is to make our paths to our folders a little cleaner, especially once they are loaded on a server. This is a good practice for all files that are ever loaded on a website, included but not limited to HTML, CSS, images, fonts, PDFs, etc. Within this folder, we're going to create four other folders. We're going to create a CSS folder, fonts, images, and JS. As you can see by their names on the folders, these are going to hold our CSS files or our style sheet, fonts if we decide to load fonts that we're going to call within the site, images, of course, and JS, which is our JavaScript files. Remember, this is just our basic folder structure. The next thing we're going to do is create our index.html file. The reason why we're naming index is because when you visit a website, the file named index is the first file that gets called by a server to display to the users. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open Atom. Atom is an IDE. An IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, which are designed to maximize a programmer's productivity and other related tools that makes our job easier and streamlined. You will be able to find a link to download this IDE on the description of the video. But as you can see, the, the folder itself or the project itself is already shown in, in Atom on the left hand side. What we're going to do on the basic structure folder, we're going to right click, create new file and type in index.html and then hit enter. This creates this index.html file within the basic structure folder. If we go to the folder itself, you can see the folder and then you can see the file itself within this folder. Now that we have created this, we're going to add some structure to our index page. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our doc type declaration. Okay. The doc type declaration or document type declares that the file itself is an HTML file. The next thing we're going to do is declare that our HTML if you notice, the HTML element defines the beginning and the end of the HTML file. In order to create an HTML element, what you need to do, let me go ahead and delete these, is do a less than sign, type in the name of the element, which is for in our case HTML, and the greater than sign. This is an HTML tag. In order to close this tag, we're going to follow the same pattern, except that we're going to add a forward slash. This forward slash represents the closing of an HTML, HTML. Most elements that you see in an HTML file are open and closed this way. There are some elements that are self-closing, which we're going to discuss in the future. The second thing is we're going to declare our head tag. So we're going to do it just like what we did with the HTML file or HTML tag, sorry. And the second thing will be our body element. Now, if you notice the head and body reside within the HTML tag, anything that is rendered within HTML is going to display on our site. Please note that the reason why these elements are in this order is because browsers actually read documents from the top to the bottom and either interprets or renders those elements in the order they are displayed for the most part. Now that we have the structure of our HTML page set up, let's go ahead and start adding some elements to them. Let's start from the top with the head element. We're going to set up some meta tags. 
The meta element is used to specify which character set is used, page descriptions, keywords, author, viewports, and others. These tags are created similarly to other tags that we have previously created. However, the meta tags have attributes that are defined within the tag itself. So for example, if we wanted to declare the character set that is going to be used for the site, we're going to go ahead and open up our tag with, with a less than sign, the word meta, and usually we will close it there. However, we need to add some attributes to specify why we're adding this meta tag. So what we're going to do is we're going to do char set equals UTF H eight, sorry. That tells the browser and the page itself and lets it know that the char set that we're going to be using is UTF dash eight. The next one we're going to do is going to be our meta description. So in the same way, we're going to add the word meta. However, this one uses a different attribute. So we're going to use the attribute name and we're going to define it by saying that the name of this meta tag is going to be description. But this is not useful for us. So what we need to do is now provide some content or a context towards why we're adding this description. So now we need to actually add a description to the site. We're going to do it by adding content. And then of course your description goes here and we're going to do the same thing for our keywords, name, keywords, content. And then here you will be able to separate them. For example, HTML, CSS, XML, JavaScript, whatever the content for the keywords that you're going to be using within this page. We're also going to add maybe an author content. We're going to add Kotec talk. And then here's one that you're, you'll be using, especially since we are going to try to create websites that are going to be responsive and you want them to show responsive whenever somebody sees them on their mobile devices or tablets. So in order to make that happen, you have to add another meta tag. The name of that meta tag is called viewport. And the content for this meta tag is with equals device with comma initial scale equals 1.0. What this is going to do is actually let the mobile devices and tablets know that the page should be rendered based on the device width here and that the zoom or how, how deep or how open should it be is actually 1.0, which is just leave it as it stands. Don't make it bigger or smaller than it needs to be. After adding these meta tags, what we're, go what we're going to add is going to be our title. I'm going to add here page title and close this. Let's go ahead and add an extra space above and below just so that we can see it a little bit clearer. Now, if you notice anything within this title tag, is what is going to be defined as our title of our page. Now, if we go ahead and open up our index file, we don't have anything on the side. Everything that we've done is on the head tag. The head tag or these content, these elements that we're seeing on the top of the page are mainly used by our browser as well as our search engines. If you've heard a term called SEO or search engine optimization, this content is mainly provided by this area of the HTML file or whatever file that you are creating. Of course, it looks into 
content within the site, but that's for future discussions. Just know that most of the things that you find within a, within a search results in a search engine comes from this area up here. Okay, so the page title, it may not be immediately visible here within the content area of your browser, but if you pay attention to the tab itself, you'll see that the page title displays there. Let's go ahead and just change it. Code Tech Talk Basic Structure. If we save this and we refresh our page, you'll see that it was updated. It may be easy to overlook, but if all the pages in your site have the same title, it can affect the ranking of your page on search engines and frustrate your users when they bookmark more than one page of your site. Believe me, people still use bookmarks. Let's go ahead and add some CSS to the page as well. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, which we're going to discuss in the future. For now, all you need to know is that the styles or the look and feel for the site are going to be placed on this document. Let's go ahead and create the CSS, uh, the style.css file within our CSS folder, and let's call it styles.css. So we're going to right click, new file, style.css. If you notice, it opened up a new tab. Just like the meta tags, we're going to create a link tag and add some attributes to it. So the first thing we need to do is create the link tag. And the first attribute is going to be the REL or relationship tag. Here, what we're going to define is that it's actually going to be a style sheet. The rel tag defines the relationship between the HTML and the CSS file and declares that it is a style sheet. The type defines that it is going to be a text file. And of course, it's going to be with the extension of CSS. And the href defines the location of that file based in relationship to the index page. Now that we're linking documents together, let's discuss the difference between absolute and relative links. Absolute links require the full path to the root directory or where the site is hosted um, to the file itself. Relative links show the path from the requesting document, which in our case is our index file, to the required document, which is our CSS or style.css file. In my opinion, it's always best to use re relative path rather than absolute paths unless the required document is outside of where the site is being hosted, such as external resources, which we'll discuss shortly. For relative paths, if you're looking forward, all you need to do is declare the name of the folder or folders separated by a forward slash and then the name of the file and its extension. In our case, if we look here, we have our basic structure folder, we have our index file, and then we have our CSS folder and our style.css file. What we're going to do here is we're going to declare the CSS folder forward slash style.css. Now that we have created this and we have linked our style.css file, we're, we can move on to the body element. Right above the closing tag, we're going to add our JavaScript files. So let's go ahead and add some spaces here. There is a huge debate between placing the JavaScript file either on the head, so you can add JavaScript up top here, or right above the closing tag of our um, body element. For now, let's go ahead and add it above the closing body tag, which gives the appearance to that the page loads a lot faster than it actually does, since HTML file, HTML elements load a lot faster than JavaScript. And so let's go ahead and add a file within the JavaScript folder called apps.js. New file app.js. Let's go ahead and link it to our HTML page by adding the script tag. Script. And then we're going to 
this one is not a self-closing tag like the meta or link tags so we're going to have to close it and within the script tag we're going to have to add an attribute just like what we did with link we have to define of where this file is located for the script tag it's going to be src or source if you want to pause this video, go ahead and try to link the JavaScript file to your index file. Hopefully you have something just like this. Since we're in the index folder, we're looking within the JS folder and within the JS folder, we're going to look at the app.js file. So we linked the JS forward slash app js file and that's all you need to do to uh, to link a javascript file within your html file now we're also going to uh, go ahead and add jquery to our our file itself now jquery is a library that makes developing with javascript a little bit easier is not really your pure vanilla javascript but there's a lot of similarities and just in my opinion, especially if you're starting, it helps you be able to develop and turn around things a lot quicker. So let's go ahead and go to Google. And then here we're going to do jQuery CDN. A CDN is a content delivery network that makes files such as, uh, such as this one readily available and fast. So we're going to select jQuery CDNs. And here we're going to select the jQuery.min.js. You can copy it or you can cheat and just click on the drop down and select copy script tag. We're going to paste that right above our app.js file. As you can see, this file path itself is an absolute path because we're having to look outside of our file structure in order to get to this file. Now, if you notice, we loaded this right above our app.js file because just like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, our browser renders information from top to bottom. So we want our browser to render the jQuery files first so that when we start writing code on our app.js folder it's readily available so that we can consume and use those resources and you're done right now your html page is still empty and it may not look like much but by creating this basic html template that you can duplicate will save you lots of time in the future if you have questions or if you need clarification, please feel free to leave a comment below. There are also other resources such as the W3Schools website where you can find more information and grow in your HTML and CSS knowledge. And I'll go ahead and leave those down there as well. Until next time, cheers.